All right, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about shot placement. This is something that THP talks about all the time, but hopefully we kind of can at least cover the things that we've learned over the years. You know, you, you mentioned that we talk about shot placement a lot and that it is the culmination of the hunt, like all the preparation, all the scouting, everything that goes into it, like that is, you know, the culmination of it. And then you're talking about taking an animal's life. So it's, it should be talked about a lot, like sharing experiences, um, understanding uh, d deer anatomy. You know, that was drilled into me early on in my hunting career, going through bow hunter education. You spend a lot of time talking about animal anatomy, the shot placement, taking high percentage shots that you, you know you can make. So that's, you know, that's a big part of the hunt. So that's, you know, that's from, I'm excited to talk about that today. To start, what are those vital organs that you want to hit? You know, what people say most of the time is, you know, shooting a deer behind the shoulder that that would set you up for a double lung hit, you know, a center mass hit. And still that's, you know, a double lung hit is a great shot on a, on an animal. It's going to put it down quickly. But what I prefer to do is aim tighter to the shoulder where now you get into the heart and the major vessels coming off of the heart. That leads to extremely rapid kills and uh, the, the best blood trails especially when you hit a major vessel, you know, that, that's under a high amount of pressure, you're going to get blood spraying and uh, the best possible blood trail. So, you know, when I started out, I guess I'll step back a little bit. And when I started out uh, bow hunting, you know, my, you know, my thought process was shooting the deer behind the shoulder for a, a double lung shot. And I found over time that, you know, I, I hit a lot of deer high lungs, you know, I, I was getting them obviously, but I was also missing some deer and the, you know, the handful of deer that I hit and didn't recover tended to be high hits, you know, up, up above the, you know, in the spine or high shoulder. And I've learned over the years to lower my aim point. And I think we're going to get into that, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to anatomy, you know, center mass is kind of you know, behind the shoulder is where you're going to get a double lung hit. But, you know, forward to that in the, what is called the, you know, the vital V or the pocket, that's when you get into the, you know, the top of the heart and the major vessels coming off of the heart. And that's, that's where I'm trying to hit a deer now more specifically. And I can show a couple of examples here. Here's an early season doe. You can kind of see the outline in her shoulder and you'll see where the arrow enters. That's just immediate blood spray on that deer. Yeah. So you can see that the blood spray right there. Here, there's two does right there. I followed up and got the second one. <laughs> I mean, going back to the anatomy of a deer, I mean, there's a lot of good resources out there that show you know, um, a deer's vital organs, uh, bone structure, vessels, and all that. I mean, there's there's a lot of resources out there on that. But, you know, one thing that I, like I mentioned, that, that I've learned over the years is just gravitating towards shooting a little bit lower. And shooting a little bit farther forward than a lot of a lot of people talk about like shooting behind the shoulder and that's where we found there to be the the most lethal shot is when you can get yeah. into the heart and the major vessels coming off of the heart yeah and when i was younger too i think a trap that i kind of fell into that we talk about all the time is the bad influence that a 3d target can have on an inexperienced shooter you know, you think bullseye and you translate that mm -hmm. to a hit on a deer, it's like heart shot. In reality, <laughs> where the 10 ring is, is not even close to where the heart is for one and two. Right. It also creates that center mass shooting habit that exactly. I think a lot of young bow hunters, I mean, even, even more experienced bow hunters, it's still my number one mistake. I did it in late October this year. It's just easy yep. to get on the center of an animal and pull the trigger. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of the old, you know, Delta targets, McKenzie and stuff like that. I grew up doing a lot of 3d shoots and yeah, ex you're exactly right. The 10 ring was a basically center mass in the chest cavity. Nowadays, my 3d targets, almost all of the shots, like the, the concentration of shots are basically like eight, you know, eights instead of tens because mm -hmm. I'm shooting lower and farther forward as I would in a bow hunting situation. Let's just cover some of the factors that pop into your mind when shooting at deer, because every situation is different. Just kind of listing off some of the things that you're factoring in before you make the shot. Some of the biggest factors are going to be distance. I mean, I, I tend to take closer shots at deer, high percentage shots. I know I can make, I mean, that, that would probably be a kind of a mantra that, uh, that I keep coming back to when you're talking about shooting at game animals is high percentage shots. I know I can make. So distance is a big one. 
you know, for whitetails, ideally 30 yards and in. I think the longest shots I've ever taken there is 40 yards. Most everything is is 15 to 25 typically. So distance is a big one of position of the animal. Um, I'm looking for broadside, ideally quartering away or ever so slightly quartering to our, our shots that, that I will take. And then body language, reading body language is another big one. Anticipating, especially when you get into distances beyond 15 yards, really out to 20, 20 plus. Now you're having to factor in how far is that animal, that deer in particular, how far is a deer going to drop in response to the sound of the bow going off? Mm-hmm. That That is a challenging one. That That is you know, for years now, people have, have written about and done videos about as we're doing right now, you know, talking about the reaction of a deer to the sound of the shot. So I, I think what has made the most sense for me now and given me the most confidence is always aiming for the lower third of the deer, aiming for a heart shot, knowing that if the deer does drop, you still have room to work with let me add a couple to that, yep. Greg. Also factoring in like what he can hear, how much sound or even other deer can affect that deer's sense of you know urgency to get out of there, which may make him drop the shot. And I think it's definitely apparent when you watch bucks that are preoccupied with like does, for example, they have a tendency to drop less than the buck that mm-hmm. is on his own cruising, for example. And again, having other factors involved like water sounds, wind, all those things can play into that. And then um, the other thing too that I think plays into shot choices is what your bow setup is. For example, um, my girlfriend, Whitney, if she shoots at the same distance as I shoot with a two totally different bow setups, arrow speed and all that's going to be much different. So that plays a factor in some decision making as well as what your equipment is as far as arrow and broadhead but i would agree that number one thing distance and you know body language of the deer yeah maybe another one is being conscious of of where you're at mentally you know if you're if you're shaking and can't 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 get the pin on target for whatever reason you know having the discipline to not force a shot is a is another one you know in the past few years i've tried to make a conscious effort to aim lower for a heart shot and to aim a little bit farther forward to get a, you know, a vital V shot, essentially to, to get the most lethal shot. This one here, this is uh, uh South Dakota buck. And this was slightly quartering too, but as you can see tight to the shoulder, it was right in that vital V and in less than 10 seconds, the deer is down because it's forward and low and it's inside of that vital v you know if you're able to look at a lot of these examples that are online of deer vitals you can see where that heart sits and it Mm -hmm. actually allows you to hit really low yep if you're forward enough because if you're too far back then problems happen there right right you know, when the deer is on the ground, the shot actually looks higher up than what it did there in the footage. But I mean, it just dead centered his heart. And as you can see there, I, I condensed that footage a little bit. But basically, in about 12 seconds, he was already tipping over as quick and as humane of a kill as you can get. So that's what I'm going for right there. You can hit a deer surprisingly low as long yeah. as it's forward and still hit the heart and get quick, clean kills. And then again, like we had talked about, it just, you know, that that's becoming my aim point. So that way, if and when a deer does duck, you have more room for error there. I guess that, that'll that lead in uh, to uh, the next example we'll show here. This is this year, right? Or this past yep. season, I guess. Yep. You've also called to this buck, right? He's coming in right. kind of on, on edge yep. already looking. Yep. So we'll, this will give us a lot to talk about on this one. Got it. That, that deer, like you said, it would just call to. So th- this is going to you know, go through you know, kind of a checklist of, of what we had talked about. Uh, distance wise, I'd already ranged uh, a rock. So I knew where 20 yards was and that deer was just barely on the other, other side of it. So like 22 yards. So distance wise, I knew right where he was at. He's coming in looking for the source of a sound. In this situation, I didn't have a decoy out. So there was nothing really to take his attention off of me. Like he was still on full alert looking for you know the fight that he had just heard 
So when he stops, he's looking for the source of a sound. He doesn't he doesn't know I'm there specifically, but he's he's looking for something. He's on alert, ears up, head up. I'm I'm you have have kind of read that body language. And in this case, I'm actually I'm taking longer to aim. It was, it was honestly one of the best shots I felt that I've executed because I was I was actually waiting for him to step a little bit farther forward in the frame to get a little bit better footage. So as as I'm waiting for him, I'm you know I'm taking my time aiming, and then I realize you know he he may not step forward like this is going to be my opportunity here. So I'm I'm taking my time and aiming and knowing okay he's 22 but he's going to duck. He's actually he's turned his head and is looking in my direction now. So I know he's probably going to drop you know, at least four to six inches. Mm -hmm. So, and I have, and I, you know, I can see it in my mind's eye, you know, exactly where that 20 yard pin was when I let go and it was straight up in line with his leg, but I mean, just about on his body line. I mean, that's exactly where it was when I let, when I let go, I mean, just above the body line. And then you could see the result of the shot. He ducked, dropped into it. And you can kind of see the, you know, the outline of his shoulder there. I mean, it hit him perfectly perfectly right in the heart and actually slice the major vessel coming off of the heart that's a perfect example of aiming forward and low going back to how we learn how to shoot by shooting 3d targets and thinking of that double lung hit we're taught a lot more to shoot more center i think a lot of times that's why you know the the when in doubt back out saying kind of comes about it's just like well you hit him center mass kind of mid body you're gonna get him that's true but Mm -hmm. like you said at the very beginning we're shooting a live animal we want this to happen right now i don't want it to happen six hours from now i've had that happen and it sucks because afterwards you don't even really feel the same as you do as if you just make a perfectly ethical shot the same celebration isn't there there's just right a sadness involved with it so i think what we've learned with making shots that are more forward you're hitting more of that major arteries and vessels that are going to the heart even if you just hit lungs and you hit above the heart, you're still cutting that stuff off and the lungs are filling up faster. Everything's so much quicker. Mm-hmm. One easy way to think about it is, have you ever seen a deer go up when you shoot it? It's like probably not many times does a deer jump or, you know, go no. up. I don't know that I've ever seen it. When they turn to run, and I, I guess also for clarification, I don't think there's anything as such as jumping the string. They're not jumping. They're just turning to run. Therefore, when they load, naturally their body moves down. So does ours, right? If you're standing here in a straight upright position, you go to run, that's what your body does. It bends over. So the same thing with the deer. There was a, a lot to learn off, off of that one, you know, personally that I took away from it. One thing was that, uh, you know, just taking my time aiming. I think a lot of times you a person has more time to aim and execute the shot than what you think. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, some, some situations, you, you know it's got to be fast for whatever reason, but more often than not, I think a person has a couple extra seconds to aim. That's and a good uh, point. and one thing I've noticed, and again, the advantage of filming hunts is that going back and looking at second angle footage, uh, you know, there's been some shots where I felt like, yeah, I was, I held on him for several seconds and I go back and look and it was almost instantaneous. So I think if a person can get themselves to slow down a little bit and make sure they're settling the pin in, you're going to make a lot better shots more consistently and, and hopefully avoid the heartbreak. All right, everybody. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If uh, there's anything that you guys want us to talk about in future episodes, leave us a comment. Love to hear your guys' good, bad, and ugly experiences in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Mm